In today's Mac OS tip, I just want to briefly talk about disk utility. This is something that you can go up to the Go menu when you're in the Finder, go to the Utilities folder, and one of the utilities is Disk Utility. This is a utility that's used for managing external hard drives and USB thumbsticks and really any storage device that you connect to your computer. And it's been overhauled in the past few years. It is, in my opinion, at least more simple compared to the older versions. And there's still a lot of power that you can use this utility for. So on the left column, you're going to see a list of your devices. So this iMac that I'm on has one internal hard drive, which is named Macintosh HD. With it selected, on the right side, I can see the information for that disk. Below that is the external drives. So I have an external RAID connected, which is this one. I can see underneath of it the format. It is the uh, Apple uh, file system format here. And if I switch between the drives, notice on the right side, we see the amount of storage that's being used as well there for this drive, um, which is cool. You can get an overview of that, especially for an external drive. It can be helpful to know how much space is being used. This uh, external uh, RAID is a six terabyte drive. It's one volume, and this is how much space it's taking up. Uh, we can see there's a little bit of free storage. And then below that, we get some of the details about this drive. So that's what disk utility is really for as far as the informational portion. You can see here too, I have two external uh, time machine drives and we see as well, it's a USB drive and we see the uh, format for that drive. So these ones were the Apple file system, uh, the ones below are Mac OS extended, and we blow, so yeah, both of them are journaled. Uh, this one is an eight terabyte drive, the one below it is a one terabyte drive. And we can see the free space as well. So this is pretty straightforward. What's nice about this and what I usually use if I'm confused with hard drives is I'll select the disk and I'll be able to see how it's connected. So all three of these are connected via USB. So I'm able to see those um, connections there, which is nice. Uh, in addition to be being able to see data about your drives, you can go up to info and see all kinds of other information about the drive. In addition to that, one of the things that I use disk utility for the most is for partitioning a hard drive. So if I have an external drive that I want to split up into two separate partitions, you can select the drive, click on the partition uh, button up in the toolbar here, and then we have the option to add partitions. So I can just hit the plus at the bottom, and now I've created this second uh, partition. I could change the amount of size that I want this to take up. So maybe I want it to be about 100 gigs. We'll set it to that. On the right side, I see what the um, scheme is going to be for this one, the total size of the disk. All makes sense. All you have to do is type in a name for this. So this might be your media drive, because I might have Time Machine on one side of it, maybe have a little media portion on it. I can set that there. If you need to change the format, you'll get the list of formats that you can select here. Um, kind of an overview of this, the Apple file system is a newer format that is usually the one I'm rec recommending going forward if all of your equipment is newer. Uh, in the past, probably the past 10 years or so, Mac OS Extended Journal has been a, a great format to use. Compatibility-wise, using MS-DOS or XFAT, these are, are formats that are compatible between Windows and Mac. So if you're using a, maybe a USB thumb drive that you want to share between devices, those are good formats to go with. Uh, Windows NT is specific to the Windows platform. So you might get a drive from another editor or maybe a graphics artist with a bunch of media on it. If you connect it to your computer and you see it's Windows NT, uh, you should be able to read that information and you can copy those files to your computer or to another drive. But usually you won't be able to make changes to a drive that's formatted with that, uh, with that format. Um, so that's here. You can manually type in. So if I did actually want it to be 100 gigs, I'll change it to 100. Uh, and we see the gigabytes there. If you're working with larger or smaller devices, you could change the specific readout here if you wanted to. Um, looks good. If everything's great on there, you can hit apply. If you don't want it, hit revert or cancel. Anything here in disk utility, another warning, you, you can fully erase a hard drive and lose all the data on that drive using disk utility. So make sure to read any of these pop-ups that come up and understand what's happening. It, it, as far as I've seen, every message is very clear. Like in this case, it lets us know it's going to partition this device and change some of the partitions. In our case, it's adding another one. But no partitions will be erased. 
So we're adding media, and then Time Machine is going to be smaller, so it's going to resize that one. Just read these messages. Make sure you're very clear and understand what's going to happen because you could go through here and use the Erase tab to fully erase a drive, set it up as new. When you do that, you are, you are erasing it. Like That's just what's happening there. So when you go through and make any of these changes, it'll let you know it's applying the changes. You can click on Show Details to see where it actually is in the process of making those changes. Depending on the speed of your external hard drive and a, and a couple other factors, this is uh, any really any changes here could be something that takes a couple minutes, a couple seconds, uh, but there are changes that can take hours, if not days, to complete. You can also go in here and clone hard drives, make copies of things. Uh, if you're copying data, that can take much, much longer. So just consider all those things when you're working with Disk Utility and double check everything. One of the things I have a lot of clients do when they're kind of questioning what they're doing or troubleshooting something maybe over the phone and I can't see the computer, I'll usually have them eject, unmount any drives that are not the ones we're dealing with when you're using Disk Utility. That way, there's no confusion. Right now, I have Time Machine A. I have external storage in Time Machine B. I could very easily forget which one's which and accidentally erase one of these drives. If both of these were just named Time Machine, you don't want to erase the wrong one. So uh, rather than make the changes and find out the hard way, just go through, unmount, eject the hard drives you know you're not making any changes to, then go back into Disk Utility. It'll make things uh, a lot easier there. The one last actually tip that I wanted to, to throw out with Disk Utility that I sometimes use, use it for is just mounting a hard drive. So what I mean by that is when you have a, a drive, say this external storage drive, if this drive is uh, something that's connected to the computer, but maybe it's been ejected, so maybe I've taken it down and I've you know, trashed it, which will eject it and remove it from the desktop, you'll notice on the left column here, external storage is now grayed out, but Disk Utility still sees it. So if this is something where maybe you've ejected a drive or you've switched users and the drives that are connected are not being seen, rather than going and physically trying to get behind the machine and unplug it and reconnect it physically, you can go here into Disk Utility, click on the external storage or whichever drive is not mounting, and then hit the mount button. If you click mount and the drive doesn't mount, there may be a problem with the drive, and you can actually select it on that left column and click the first aid button at the top center. And that'll run a check on the hard drive and in some cases be able to fix a problem and allow the drive to mount again. In other cases, it might warn you and let you know you need to copy all of the media off that drive and reformat it. Just follow the prompts that are inside of Disk Utility or give me a contact. You can send an email to me if something weird's happening. Just take a screenshot of that and send that over and I'll advise you on what the next steps I would recommend. Uh, that's just a quick overview of Disk Utility. As an editor, especially using Final Cut, I'm using external drives all the time. So I'm using Disk Utility pretty frequently to manage those drives and make changes to them. So it's a very useful utility. Uh, again, to give another warning, just make sure, double check everything, those messages. Don't erase a drive that you don't actually want to erase. So if you got any questions with it, leave it in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe, and we'll have another tip for you coming tomorrow.